Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining today. I'm Shauna, and this is Real Talk, powered by CMD. And today, I'm so excited to have one of my dear friends, my mentor, my first boss, who took me on when I had everything to learn, <laughs> Alfred White. Alfred, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, good afternoon, Shauna. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. So everybody, Alfred is now the Senior Director of Marketing and Partnerships for College Football Playoff. Um, and you didn't get there overnight, for sure. And you have had incredible roles and really been a pivotal part of the evolution of sport and entertainment, especially, in the, you know, the college scene. Um, so I'd love to hear you share your evolution and, and how'd you get to that seat you're in now? Well, sure. Um, well, I, I, I tell a lot of people that I've had a, a, a very charmed career, and, and, and I really believe that. Um, you know, it, um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of really good things have happened for me and to me uh, in this industry, and um, I'm, I'm thoroughly grateful for, you know, all of the um, you know, mentors um, and, and folks that I've worked with along the way, including yourself. Um, <laughs> But um, it's um, it's just been a really cool ride. Uh, it it all started, um, and I won't put dates on these because um, <laughs> you can tell by my gray hair that uh, I've been in the business for a while. But um, uh, it all started at Texas Tech University out in West Texas in Lubbock, Texas, uh, where I, I got my undergraduate degree. And um, I had no idea what was happening at the time, but uh, I, I, something I must have been. Um, in the works for me, uh, because as a student, I was a student assistant in the sports information office at Texas Tech uh, as an undergrad, and I made um, a slew of, of contacts um, while I was an undergrad uh, at, uh, at Tech in the uh, athletics department and the sports information office, and by the time I graduated, uh, there were people um, literally lined up um, and offering me um, connections uh, for jobs. And I had no idea that uh, that the whole time that I was an undergrad, um, you know, working as a student assistant and making these contacts and, and really, I guess, giving uh, first impressions uh, of myself uh, to all these people that I was getting to know that um, when I graduated from college, uh, these people would be ready to uh, help me with uh, getting my first job out of college. And so, um, uh, believe it or not, I had uh, a variety of opportunities, but the um, the one that I chose was right there at Texas Tech. You know, I uh, chose to uh, stay there and be an assistant director of um, sports information uh, at Tech, and I did that for for three and a half years, and then I went on to the NCAA. And um, as um, as the story goes, you know, somebody that I met uh, during the time that I was a student assistant. Um, ended up being my first boss um, at the uh, at the NCAA, and you know I went there as an assistant director of communications. Um, I left there as director of corporate marketing, and I was there uh, almost 15 years. I worked on 15 Final Fours. You know mm -hmm. I worked on licensing, uh, merchandising, communications, uh, promotions of the almost 80 championships that the um, that the NCA sponsored uh, at the time I was there when the NCAA uh, first got into the uh, women's national championships mm -hmm. business. Um, but I think my uh, proudest moment at the uh, NCAA was when I was a, a part of the team uh, that started the uh, the corporate partner program uh, mm -hmm. at the NCAA. Um, it was a uh, it was it was a fledgling program that um, you know some of our rights holders uh, suggested that we get involved with and. Um, you know, we really believed in um, crawling before we walked and, and walking before we ran. And early on in that, that particular program, uh, we didn't we didn't do uh, anywhere close to the amount of things that they are doing today um, in in corporate marketing um, at the at the NCAA. And so, um, you know, like I said, that one of my proudest moments is is being a part of the team that uh, that got that that program started. Um, and you know, um, along the way, doing those uh, 15 years, almost 15 years at the uh, NCA, I, I met some folks um, during one of those uh, uh, projects that I was responsible for, uh, that led to me becoming uh, the commissioner of the Southern Conference, um, and that uh, is what uh, took me to Asheville, North Carolina. Um, 
I was, um, you know, commissioner of that, that particular conference. I'd gotten to know several folks um, in that league uh, by uh, virtue of working on the NCAA Division One AA football championship. Um, and um, you know, um, you know, one thing led to another. Their commissioner's job came open. Um, you know, people uh, that had known me uh, thought that um, I would be a, a good candidate for that position. Um, I talked with them, um, and um, they selected me. And and really, that was, um, as I think back on it, probably uh, uh, one of my most favorite jobs that I've had uh, over the course of my career. Um, and I was, um, you know, rocking along um, and, and loving that job a lot until, um, you know, really the uh, the opportunity that uh, caused our past to cross um, the National Basketball Development League. You know, the NBA was uh, just getting into the uh, minor league basketball business um, uh, in the late 2000s, early, early 2001. And Asheville was one of the markets uh, mm -hmm. that they chose to, um, you know, put one of the inaugural um, um, franchises of, of teams, there were eight of them, eight Southeastern cities that uh, the uh, MBDL um, started in, and Asheville was one of them. You know, one of the individuals at the NBA uh, was somebody that I'd met along the way and had needed some assistance with some city officials mm -hmm. uh, to get the um, uh, team uh, placed uh, in Asheville and and I had helped uh, with, uh, with with some of those uh, introductions. And um, once things um, got done, all of the dots were connected, the, the I's were dotted, the T's were crossed, uh, they needed a, a team president and um, uh, they called and and I was uh, early on saying um, thanks, but uh, no thanks. Uh, but um, uh, they eventually, um, you know, made an offer that I couldn't refuse, and so um, I, uh, I made that jump. Um, and you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I think we're going to talk about this later. But uh, I think, um, you know, making that jump from college sports to uh, the professional ranks uh, was something that um, uh, I didn't know much about. I didn't know anything about. Yeah. And uh, once I did it, um, I quickly realized that um, you know college sports was really more um, uh, aligned with my uh, my personality and work my work ethic. Um, and um, you know, so I did the uh, the, the, the development league um, uh, experience um, for three years, and I got back to college athletics as quick as I could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, that opportunity presented itself uh, with Conference USA, um, mm -hmm. and that's what brought me uh, to Texas. I uh, came to Texas in 2004 mm -hmm. uh, to be um, uh, a senior associate commissioner at, uh, at Conference USA, and I did that for 12 years and um, had an opportunity about five years ago to uh, move 0.9 miles away from Conference USA to come work for the college football playoff. Um, and I've been at the college football playoff uh, for the last uh, five years and uh, thoroughly enjoying it. Um, you know, this is, um, you know, clearly uh, uh, one of, if not the best um, uh, event in college sports. You know, I'm very um, uh, blessed to have been able to uh, work uh, on both the Final Four and the college football playoff national championship. Um, and there's only a handful of us that uh, have that distinction. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be in that um, and, and, and that, that, that club that can say that they, they worked on both of them. And so here I be at the college football playoff and uh, thoroughly enjoying it. That's fantastic. What a run, what a career. I'm, you know, it, it's interesting as you talk, there's so many moments that you were a part of an organization during these pivotal times, right? So, um, you know, as I actually only learned this uh, in February, but you were uh, the first black, um, commissioner in a non HBU HBCU NCAA division one conference. And that was with your commissioner of the Southern conference. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but then, but you were also, I'm, I'm, you know, part of the MBDL, um, starting and I'm grateful that, uh, Phil Evans and David Stern, the late David Stern were convincing. <laughs> <laughs> because and found a way to give you something that you couldn't turn away. But, um, you know, you, and I'm sure even being part of um, college football playoff during, you know, COVID, these pivotal moments. So 
you know, I'm what what's that been like? And is that been kind of something that draws you to them? Those to do things is that if it's at a peak moment, or obviously that wouldn't be the case with the COVID situation, but I'm just curious what that's like as a part of your journey. Well, it's, it's, it's certainly been um, an experience like no other, and I, I probably uh, should have been uh, taking some good notes and, and writing a memoir of some kind to um, maybe uh, put together and publish um, somewhere along the way, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's been quite an experience. Um, you know, we um, uh, typically uh, came to work uh, talking about bigger and better, um, best ever, and, and, and things like that, um, but then uh, the, the pandemic came along and, and took all those things off of the table for us. Um, yeah. And uh, it was a, a completely different uh, way of, uh, of thinking about doing things. And um, it, um, I think it um, made us all sort of uh, take a step back mm -hmm. and, um, you know, get a hold of our priorities. You know, first and foremost, mm -hmm. um, our event is for the student athletes, yeah. uh, you know, the coaches, the administrators um, and fans. Uh, we didn't uh, have as many fans as we were accustomed to, uh, but we were able to uh, ultimately uh, put on um, a national championship game last year for 20% yeah. of the capacity of Hard Rock Stadium in, in right. Miami. And so, um, you know, it was uh, for a variety of reasons, um, uh, good for um, our industry, good for our, our sport, um, good for a variety of reasons for us to be able to um, um, have a college football season um, and have a college football playoff national championship. Um, you know, with as, as much uh, devastation as the pandemic caused uh, last year for us to uh, be able to um, have an event that put smiles on people's faces yeah. uh, was, uh, was, was quite an accomplishment uh, for our team. Uh, we were glad that uh, we were able to um, um, have uh, four teams that um, you know, qualified for the national championship. Uh, we had uh, two teams that were able to play in a national championship game. Um, you know, there were um, times that got close uh, for one thing or another, but at the end of the day, we, we, we played the games. Uh, you know, a lot of our, um, our partners um, were able to take advantage. Uh, several were not, uh, but um, that was uh, kind of par for the course last year. Um, yeah. And um uh, we're, we're moving ahead. Yeah, it was uh, something that uh, we don't really uh, care to do again if we don't have to, uh, but um, we're ready. We're ready to move forward. Yeah, definitely. It sounds like that's been a bit of a theme for you, though, in your not though, but, you know, in your career to continue, like to move forward, make your mark, go forward, go, you know, and, and accomplish and do things that maybe weren't done before or that way. And so, you know, when you was it was it, it talked about and, and how much have you seen that dialogue shift. So it was uh, it was it was definitely uh, discussed uh, significantly, um, uh, but you know me uh, in, in a way that a lot of people probably don't. Um, you know, I I, I don't uh, try to um, draw a lot of attention to myself. Right. Um, you know, I I had had the benefit of um, of, of being um, in some circles um, of um, you know, um, you know, black coaches and black administrators, um, and 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 really kind of talking about um, uh, what the um, sort of strategy should be to um, um, you know promote um, you know um, successful black coaches and successful um, black administrators, um, and along the way, um, I uh, I learned that um, that there are some um, that uh, take um, a lot of um, pleasure and pride in, in, in being uh, loud about uh, the accomplishment. Um, and then there are some that um, uh, needed to accept the responsibility of, um, you know, uh, leading by example, mm -hmm. um, you know, showing that there were um, successful, um, you know, black coaches and successful black administrators and not just talking about it. Um, and so, um, from a strategic perspective, um, you know, I uh, I I, I um, was 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 more than happy to you know land in that category of of leading by example, um, you know, letting others um, uh, be uh, loud and proud about uh, how you know black coaches and black administrators can get the job done. Um, it was um, a role that I happily accepted. 
was to uh, lead by example, show that um, you know um, I'm I'm a black administrator that can um, not only meet expectations but exceed expectations, and that's always kind of been uh, the um, uh, the position that I've taken. Um, it hadn't um, um, always uh, resonated with, with with everyone. I think um, some people would, um, would would take great pleasure in and me uh, thumping myself on the chest and say, uh, look at me, uh, see what all I've done. Um, but I think I've got a, a record that sort of speaks for itself. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, and I think there are others that uh, want to, um, you know, be loud and proud and, um, you know, thump their chest. And so I think there's room for all of us um, in the room and at the table uh, yeah. to do those types of things. And uh, really all that, um, all that matters is the story at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I can say this from working with you as we did and, and so closely. And I was, you know, I was brand new, didn't know what the heck I was doing. But, you know, my example is exactly what you did every day. And, you know, I so much of what I learned was because of your example and you, you know, bringing me into meetings. I remember going to, um, I can't remember his name, but the one of the Arby's corporate partner meetings that we went to that you took me to. Promise. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, you involved me in the vendor deal that we did with Ingalls for the apple pie. Why I remember the specifics, I don't know. <laughs> like in, in marketing and partnerships, you really instilled with me these incredible, um, you know, perspective that I think I've used to this day. And, and for partnerships, it was making sure they were not just that they were mutually beneficial. You talked about that, but you talked about it as what how would you drive the business of your partner forward by doing it? And so it, I, that always stuck with me. And I, I swear, I still use the same terminology. And then in marketing, it was, you know, again, by your example, it was, it was authentic marketing, being active in the community, being engaging, storytelling before storytelling was a thing. Um, so, you know, I just, I'd want to call those things out as like, I really learned that in the very beginning of my career from you. And so, you know, over time, are you still seeing the same things as like the most important in those two spaces? And, and what are you seeing in your everyday, um, you know, in college uh, athletics? Well, a couple of things. I think um, at the end of the day, um, what we do is um, really nothing any different than, you know, people dealing with people. Um, and people like dealing and working with people that they know and that they like. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, you know, before that story comes along, um, I think uh, people have to, you know, develop a comfort level with you and, and, and make sure that, um, you know, they don't mind, you know, having a conversation with you. They don't mind, um, you know, breaking bread with you. They don't mind uh, talking business with you. Um, and then, um, you know, people will, will want to know, um, so who are you with uh, and, what, and what's your story? Well, I'm glad you asked. And, and so you um, are able to, you know, walk into that door and tell them about um, who you are and, and what you do and, and uh, what your business does um, for the big picture. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully uh, that big picture can be boiled down to um, um, a smaller picture where that, um, that potential you know, sponsor or a partner can take advantage of what um, your property is able to do for their product or service. Um, and then that, that, that launches you into the conversation about um, um, really it's um, uh, on, on the one side, on the business side of things, it's, it's a transaction, it's a mm -hmm. sale. Um, but uh, for, for, for practical purposes, um, you know, nobody's gonna get into a partnership, nobody's gonna get into a sponsorship if it can't help them mm -hmm. um, solve a problem of some kind. You know, some yeah. people, some sponsors um, will have a, a public relations issue that they want to uh, address. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some will have a, um, a social uh, issue of some kind that they want to address. Um, many will have um, additional products and our services that they want to sell. And if your, your property is one that can help them uh, do any of those. Uh, it's a it's a grand slam if it can do all of those. But if it, if your property can help them do any of those, um, you've got a, a match made in heaven. And that's and I think that's probably why it's um, a little bit um, um, 
uh, tricky um, to, to put together, you know, these really rich relationships because, um, you know, it, not all of these relationships work for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. but when you can uh, find the right, right property um, and the right companies, um, those, those, those marriages can, can really turn out to be uh, fruitful for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before I let you go today, I've got two final questions for you. And one is knowing, being someone that you've had such a big impact um, you know, in, in my life, and I know many people who you've impacted, um, you know, what are, what are some, I mean, a lot of us are people who have worked for you in some capacity. And I'm curious, like, what do you look for um, in standout people? What do you look at, whether those are traits or characteristics, or, you know, if you were to, or you could turn that to, are there recommendations you have for people who are listening to this to like, how does somebody be on your radar? How do you think someone's going to be on that trajectory? Well, I think uh, first and foremost, they, they need to be good people. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think um, along those lines, it doesn't it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt, I should say, um, that people have um, prepared themselves uh, for a career in our industry, um, you know, by um, uh, lining up a, a good um, selection of experiences, uh -huh. um, you know, doing um, doing everything and not refusing to not do anything, you know, because <laughs> um, there, there can be times uh, when, um, when you're asked to do just about anything and um, no boss, no supervisor, um, nobody that's um, uh, over you is, is, ever want, is ever gonna wanna hear someone say, um, well, I'm sorry, I don't do that. Um, well, um, <laughs> you're not a good fit for anybody's team if you're um, going to ever refuse to do something. Um, and so I think, um, you know, um, being um, available um, is, is something that um, goes, goes a long way. And, and being a good person, uh, being, a, being, a, being a person that um, uh, your constituents um, want to be around and work with, um, you know, those, those are all good first steps. And, you know, I think the, um, you know, the other kind of um, um, nuts and bolts qualifications, uh, you know, some can be taught, you know, um, yeah. I think, um, I don't know that you can really teach somebody to be a good person, you know, mm -hmm. so either you are or you're not, uh, but then some of those other things, um, I think you can teach. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. And I appreciate that you taught me early on to say yes to learning everything that I could. <laughs> <laughs> I think I touched every area except for finance <laughs> when I was with you. So thank you for that. Um, and then, you know, you've talked about where you're focusing ahead and, you know, for college football playoff. And I know you've been in 2022 planning for the national championship game. So is there anything that we can, ex any like sneak peek you can give us of what to expect coming up? Well, um, the biggest sneak peek um, we uh, we want to be able to provide is normalcy. You know, we, <laughs> <laughs> we had er everything but normalcy uh, in 2021 in, in Miami. And, you know, it was really, um, uh, it was really sad because uh, we had had, uh, you know, six of our, fir of our first six championships, we had had six straight years of uh, not very good weather. Uh -huh. um, and then we get to Miami and we have phenomenal weather, uh, but we've got to do it in a, in a pandemic kind of year. And so we, it was just, um, it was really unfortunate. Uh, the folks in, in Miami, the Orange Bowl Committee, uh, those, those, those folks had done a phenomenal job uh, preparing for us. Uh, and then the pandemic hit and uh, really just uh, cut the legs out from under all of the uh, really good work uh, they had done to uh, prepare for us. Um, but uh, we're uh, squarely focused on Indianapolis in the 2022 oh, yeah. National Championship. And uh, we, uh, we, we hope uh, that uh, we can bring back uh, things uh, to normal. Uh, that's the way we are planning uh, okay. right now. And um, hopefully, uh, and we got our fingers crossed there that uh, we don't have to uh, roll, roll anything back. Uh, you know, I think uh, if anybody uh, happened to be with us in New Orleans in 2020, uh, we hope 2022 is that and better. Nice, nice. Well, I'll cross my fingers with you and I will <laughs> thank you for all that you've done to help my evolution, to impact me and so many others that I know. 
Um, and if anybody wants to get in touch with Alfred, you can find him on LinkedIn. Um, and I will always help bring good people to this great man. So reach out if there's anything that Alfred, if I can do to help connect you to Alfred. And uh, thanks so much. Have an awesome day. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you.